is another beautiful day in Payne County, America. That's P-A-Y-N-E, America, with the apostrophe. And you've tuned in to the Pastors of Pain. Father Brian O'Brien, my sidekick over here, my co-pilot, my Hello, co- friends. And me, Father Kerry Wakulich, pastor of St. John Catholic Student Center here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, right on the edge of the campus of Oklahoma State University. And so you may be listening to this on the radio. You may be like, wow, they, these guys are amazing. You can also listen to us on Spotify and iTunes Radio, as well as just like go on social media. It's SFX Stillwater uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the same as St. John Catholic Student Center, CatholicPokes.com. And you can find all of the needed information to make your pilgrimage to the Red Dirt Riviera, or as it's also known, the Red Soil Riviera, if I am corrected that's more, again. That's more, uh, ac- that's more correct. Oh, well, thank you. So Father, uh, Father Brian O'Brien, is, uh, he's the pastor. We're here in the studio at Pete FM today uh, doing what we always do. Ro- ro- <laughs> and a cheering section. The audience is, goes wild. When I, ooh, yes. Spaced out and uh, love and life. Spaced out, masked up, wearing love and life. Mm-hmm. You already have masks today? I said masked. Oh, masked. Masked. Mask. Oh, you have M-A-S-K. Masked up. I just uh, wonder, like, what are some, like, masks that one can wear? Can can one, I mean, like, Jason, what a hockey I mask? I tell, well, it's, very, it's uh, actually very interesting on the mask front. You know, we, we, we have um, kind of a big supply of the uh, N95 masks. That's what we've been wearing. Around. The little white white things? The that, white, but I like... Uh, uh, it has the like the metal bar. I'm mm-hmm. making a hand motion here. No, not that. Like this. Mine's got palm trees on one side and crosses on the other. Yeah, I like it's, this. It's the two the, things I love. The, the Lord. Of, it's got the little metal thing on it that goes around your nose. Yeah. Because I wear glasses, as do you. Uh-huh. And I do not like Four the eyes. glasses fogging up. That is well, a, s- stop breathing for once, a, would you? That just, is a barrier hey, you know to what? my happiness. Just stop breathing. Uh, maybe. But I'm kind of a, I don't know. That that gets in my... Anyway, but then there are... Um, what's fu- what's funny is when this whole thing started and people, they started talking about masks, there was some, there was some like college or something that like came out with a mask, like with their logo on it, and people like freaked out. Like... I can't believe you would, you know, make money, try to make money off this great tragedy. And now, like... I saw a hippo the other day. Everybody. Cows jumping over the moon. Well, and I think it shows kind of the permanence that masks are going to be <laughs> yes. in, in, the, in the culture. Uh, it's going to be... They're going to be around for, that, for a long well, that, time. You know, Mandato- you know, mandatory or not. Right. Um, I remember this was back March... I'm going to go with the third week of March, right when the kind of the shutdown happened. I remember going to Walmart and I saw one of my parishioners uh, who, and she listens to the show. So she may know who she is. She was, I, I didn't have a mask on. This was in March. She was the only person in the Walmart with a mask on. And I remember thinking, dang, she's like, she's hardcore. Right. Oh my gosh. Uh, and now of course everybody. Yeah. Has, I'm thinking about going with like a like a mask like for J- with Jason like a Jason hockey mask. Oh, that's so. what I was gonna say. So we had a guy uh, who also I think listens to the show. Uh, he went uh, two weeks ago at mass, full like face shield, <laughs> like a yes. almost like a welder. <laughs> yeah, all right. Or or what I actually thought of when I saw him was like movies you see where they're like doing an autopsy. Yes. And it's like what you the, don't only get blood doctor, squirted on, right? What the doctor wears when he's like about to saw into somebody, <laughs> like Doctor Jabor when he's that. about to take off a hip yes. off a person or yes. replace it a was kneecap, that sort of like yeah. A, so blood doesn't splat. Bone saws ready. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, the, so so the, the, it's it's going around. Like uh, I saw my buddy Father Gail Hammersmith a couple of weeks ago, and he had a K State Wildcat mask. Yeah. OSU. Oh, you can get OSU. Uh, masks yeah, yeah. All over the place. I'll, I'll, you can get the one uh, that someone made. A uh, little crucifix. Yeah, the ones that people have made, I have not yet found a comfortable. But I just got a few this morning that I'm gonna that I'm gonna try. I haven't tried them on yet because right. I have kind of a big. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say something, uh, and I don't say this with great pride. I have a huge head. <laughs> you have a your face. <laughs> you have a, a uh, giant giant. It's like an orange <laughs> on a toothpick. Um, it's it's huge. like Sputnik. I have a huge. Head. It's on its own orbit. In my high school graduating class. 
uh, there were 800 people in my high school graduating yes. class. And when we got fitted for caps, uh, I was told that I had the second biggest head in my class. And who had the first? Was it Andre the Giant? Not, I will not say his was name, on- but he was, a big, he was a big guy. He was a big guy. Uh, he was bigger than me. That's a kind and of a badge of honor. So I was like, dude, my, me and my okay. hu- me and my huge head graduating from high school. Right. I mean, it, so it, we- <laughs> it's like what, an orange on a toothpick. I mean, the what, head. Uh, he go upstairs and cry yourself to sleep on your huge, huge pillow. pillow. Heed <laughs> pants. No. Oh my gosh, no, no, I no, love no. that was. From- that so, was, I mar- so I married, so I married an axe. him axe murder, which I had this uh, guy, uh, my teacher, when I was in SATCOM school in Mississippi. <laughs> we are and, so off top. And that was, you know, I said, I said, have you ever seen this show? And he's like, and he's like, yeah, you guys need to watch it. It's so his, funny. His family was Scottish. And he said, my dad has a room in our house dedicated to Scotland. And so all like. I, all this stuff That's of classic. Scotland. Anyway, let's get back. Let's get back, back on a bunny trail. Um, on a bunny trail. So we're in uh, co- still in uh, co- Corona Tide. Really, Corona? Where did that come Corona from? Corona Tide. I got it from uh, there's Easter. A po- there's, there's Easter a podcast, Tide. There's a Christmas podcast time. I listen to called CNA Editor, Editor's Desk, uh, Catholic News Agency. There's oh, a guy I like named J- J.D. Flynn. Oh yeah, J.D. Flynn. Yeah. And they kind of talk about the news and um, anyway, it's quite it's quite good. And they they've used the term Corona Tide because there's Easter Tide. Christmas tide. Yeah, it's like taking you know Catholicism lit- and mixing it with a COVID-19. liturgical season. Corona tide. <laughs> Corona uh, it's tide. An, un, an unending uh, liturgical season. But anyway, um, th- so this is, we're in ordinary time, and I just thought this was very interesting, and I think we should talk about it. Okay. Because so this Sunday, when this airs uh, on Sunday, uh, it's going to be the sixteenth Sunday in ordinary time. Right. Okay. So no one gets you know no, you know no one gets super excited about it. The readings are awesome. Um, I'm preaching on the parable of the mustard seed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. But then the next weekend, which in the most of the Catholic world will be the 17th Sunday in ordinary time, here in the great state of Oklahoma, this bastion of Catholicism that we <laughs> are five percent of the population. Uh, our bishops have authorized the movement of a liturgical feast. So to, for those of you uh, maybe uh, liturgical novices out there, we have, uh, there's, this, there's these kind of, uh, th- there's sort of a hierarchy, yeah, if sure. you will. So like Easter is at the top, and the random like Wednesday in ordinary time is at the bottom, right? <laughs> The Easter is like the <laughs> highest ranking liturgical feast. Right, right. But then every Sunday, every Sunday is like a little Easter. Yep. Every it's Sunday a resurrection is a, of the Lord Day. Solemnity. The eighth day. Okay. Yep. We have Holy Days of Obligation, etc. Anyway, so July the 28th in Oklahoma is the optional memorial, which is a low, that's low on the hierarchy of things. The optional memorial of Blessed Stanley Rother. If you don't know who that is, Google it. Stop what you're doing. Google. <laughs> Blessed click, 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 Stanley click, click, R-O-T-H-E-R Rother. Oklahoma priest and martyr. Okarchi. Okarchi, Oklahoma. In July of 1981, um, while serving his people in Santiago de Atitlan, Guatemala, mm-hmm. um, okay. Father, it, Father <laughs> Stanley Rother, a.k.a. Father Stan, was shot and killed in his rectory. The priest house. By rectory, yeah, where the priest lives. Yeah, was his sister there? By I don't know. So, uh, there was so. a someone was in the house with him, like a family member, oh, like a sibling or something like I that. I know that whole story. Okay, but anyway, so um, uh, several years ago, to 2017, I think um, he was um, beatified, which in the Catholic Church again more hierarchy. Uh, there's canonized, which is then you get the title saint. There's beatified, which is you get the title blessed. Uh huh. Uh, Stanley Rother was beatified in a beautiful mass that took place at the convention center in Oklahoma City. Yeah. And he is now blessed Stanley Rother. The first diocesan priest missionary martyr because like Boom. he's he's a priest of Oklahoma City Tulsa. Right. So at that time ni- no was, well so in so in nineteen so Oklahoma used to be all one diocese. Okay. Nineteen seventy three. Uh huh. The di- the the state split. The Holy Father. I mean, the 
we didn't we didn't like I don't like Oklahoma City anymore. We're seceding. <laughs> it was the, the the church says we're starting a new diocese. So the, o- Oklahoma City became a diocese. Tulsa became a diocese. Mm-hmm. We used to be all one. So when he was ordained, which was I don't know when he was ordained, fifty something or sixty something, he was a priest of Oklahoma City Tulsa. Right. Uh, so o- then Oklahoma. in nineteen seventy three, when it split, each priest priest got to choose: Am I going to be a priest of Oklahoma City? Am I going to be a priest of Tulsa? He since he was from Okarchi. Uh, Father Stan became a priest of Oklahoma City and then was a missionary to Guatemala and then died right. in 1981. So, yeah, it's what, because Oklahoma City, the, the, the diocese of Oklahoma City, Tulsa, had a mission to Guatemala. Correct. And so he was there, living there, working in the mission uh, in Guatemala. Sort of and, on loan. Yeah. And, and so Oklahoma. other priests, other priests had gone down there yeah. and had been working down there for the time, and then they came into the rectory uh, and said, "You're coming with us." And Basically he said, "Militants, yeah." So he had he had been standing up for his people, standing up for the poor against kind of the military power who were doing. There was a great deal of oppression happening, and he he wasn't having it. And so he stood up and he and he got killed for it. Yeah, there was there was a number of his parishioners. I I think I remember from the video that La- was that La- Lighthouse Media or La- Lampstand Media put out. It's really excellent, super well done. That they tell the story that there were all these people that were being killed. You know, farmers were being killed and their land was being taken. And if you went to go retrieve the body of say your brother who was shot that then you were put on a list of like, you're a communist too, or you're a, oh. like, like you were put on this hit list. Kind of a death list, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so bodies were just lining up in the plaza. So Roser just started burying them, and then he was put on the list, put on, the list. on the execution yeah. list as like uh, persona non grato number whatever it was, but he was high up there. And then they just walked into the rectory, and they said, you're coming with but us, and he says, and he's like, says, no, I'm not. I'm not going with you. And they shot him right there. It's they amazing. shot him and then they executed him yeah. in the. So it's a, it's a, in in one way, and this is why maybe what we what we can talk about, in one way a tragic story, right? The priest, who loved his people, is you know is killed, um, and incredibly, I, I mean, I wasn't, I was six years old, I wasn't alive, I mean, I was alive but not aware, uh, I, I wasn't living in Oklahoma at the time, but to, so to the to the people of Oklahoma what an incredibly sad event the death of this beloved priest certainly to his family many of uh, many of his family members are are still alive and around yeah. um but then this is the, i think the beauty of the of the church uh i forget who said it tertullian maybe that the the blood of martyrs is the seed of faith um and so in uh, in every case I can think of, somebody can tell us if I'm wrong. When when someone is killed for the faith, um, the, the 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 perpetrators of the murder are trying to stop the faith, are trying to to keep it down, yeah. and it always has the opposite effect. Starts to grow. Uh, yes, because people become so inspired by the martyr, uh, it it grow it ends up growing the faith. It's our way of saying, heck with you, oppressors. Yeah, it's happening the, that way in China. It happened that way in right. Africa. So it doesn't always happen like immediately, but yeah, the blood of the martyrs sort of fertilizes the ground out of which comes you know, a, str- a stronger faith for the next generation. That's what we're seeing in Guatemala. It's what we're seeing in Oklahoma, and that's really the beautiful part of having Stanley Rother as yes. like a, a, yeah, this ex- great model. Uh-huh. He's one of us. He's from, he's from us. He's from Okarchi. He's our peeps. He's uh, yeah, yeah. He's our guy, and so it doesn't mean somebody in Oregon or China or South Africa can't be inspired by him. But I know it, this happens to me. Yeah. Like when you know, there's a lot of sort of obscure Italian, French. <laughs> you know, and some of my favorite saints yeah. are are fr- you know my favorite yeah. saint is Saint Damien de Molica, who was Belgian, right? Buried in Hawaii. Um, <laughs> But but there's a certain you you know you lose something where it's like I don't I don't really know what yeah there's 15th century Spain <laughs> was like but yeah. I do know what 1980s Oklahoma uh huh you know and so it just you're there, the ability to relate so what we decided to do at St Francis Xavier in our awesome church well let me guess let me guess uh, I love it. oh I hate it when you guess. oh you 
A. Let me say, oh, you I renamed you, you renamed your church, oh, Blessed Stanley Rother. No. Okay. Uh, B. You. Um, I don't know. Wrote his name on I have a wall. A pained look on my face right now, everyone. Yeah, but you wrote his name on the wall and like dedicate. You're building a new chapel to him. Okay. No. C. I, okay, I'm out of guesses. Oh my! God. I didn't even get to see. So when we uh, when we built the church, uh, the the church, I would say uh, Saint Francis Xavier is still very much under construction. Now you're saying to yourself, but I was there and it looks great, but it's not done. We don't have stained glass windows, and we're going to at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but then if you if you look closely, we also have some niches. What's a niche? Niches uh, on the wall where statues can go. A niche is like a little indentation? Niches get stitches. (laughs) That's snitches. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've watched too many cop movies. Uh, Niches get statues. The Oh, we're going to make t-shirts. That's good. Snitches get stitches. Niches get statues. So uh, you might say, well, don't you have a bunch of statues? And the answer is, yes, there are some statues. There's the Apostle John, Peter, Paul, James, Mary, Joseph, St. Francis Xavier. And and if you have any questions about that, go back to a previous podcast on the uh, iconography. uh, the What's the heresy? Iconoclasm heresy. Yeah, we did a show on like why do, do Catholics worship graven images? Yeah, we went back to the Ark of the Covenant and all that the stuff. Go back to is no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. Yeah, I guess you could. But anyway, so, so you've got so, all these stats. So why why do you need another one? So Mother we, Teresa of Calcutta. We have a uh, Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta. So we decided um, through the generosity of several parishioners. We decided long ago. We wanted Stanley Rother in our church. Uh, that doesn't fit in my music line. Um, so then we, we also have uh, in our altar, we have two relics. One is a relic, which is a, a body part, a, bo- a bone, of St. Francis Xavier, Whoa. who's our patron, of course. Uh-huh. And then we also have a piece of the rib. I said it, and I'm saying it again. We have a piece of the rib of Stanley Rother in our altar. In the uh, in the reliquarium underneath the yes, altar. Yes, underneath the altar. Um, and so we thought, well, let's also let's let's get a statue. So some very generous people came forward. We went with our uh, the the company uh, that did all of the woodwork in the new church is called Ferdinand Stuflesser. Is he a ger- German? Uh, it's a German Italian combo. Oh, cool! La- like, like Alessandro Calderoni, uh, Mexican Italian. <laughs> the Germans and the Italians. They uh, they make beautiful stuff, and so they had never and on made, time and they, on time and on time. <laughs> They've never made a Stanley Rother. And Whoa. so we sent them a picture, which is the uh, the picture that was used at the beatification. Kind of his. So it's him. He has the New Testament in one hand, and then he has kind of his hand out, like his palm up, as if to kind of say hello and you know and welcome. And they made it, and it's stinking awesome. Have you seen it yet? Uh, so I have pictures. Oh, oh, those pictures. It's a radio show, me. though, so I can't show the pictures. Yeah. Okay. It's a. Sorry. Well. Wow, it's so the one. It's the one from the beatification. Uh, the, yes, so the that image. Was, that image was made into a statue. So now, uh, on the feast day, which is next week, okay, we are going to um, bless the new statue of Stanley Rother in our church. And I encourage all of you, every single one of you, to come see it. And okay, to ask for his intercession in your life. And the, ultimately, the goal is, and why you know, why do we put up a statue of this guy who who's dead? Uh, because he is stinking inspirational. And every person, if you've been baptized, if you've been baptized, if, well, let me say this, if you haven't been baptized, you need to call me or Father Kerry because you should be baptized because you're yeah, totally yeah. missing out. But if you've been baptized, you have been baptized as a priest, as prophet. a prophet, uh-huh. and a king. Mm-hmm. And, and by the nature of our baptism, by our very baptism, you and I are called to be missionaries. Missionary disciples of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And I think somewhere along the way, and maybe people have never kind of heard that, or there's never been, it's never sunk in. But the idea that you're, it's somehow just you, like you and Jesus, is not true. Um. Should you have a strong relationship personally with the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. But what does that look like? It, it We have to be outwardly focused and, and missionaries. Is that true? 
Am I speaking truth? You are. Yeah. I'll, I'll retweet that. Giddy up. Um, it just it just is. It's the way it is. And so we, when you look around, who who are good examples of that? <sighs> Mary, Joseph, the apostles, Saint Francis Xavier, right? And yes. you could say to all those, ah, I mean, the apostles, they lived so long ago. They don't have anything to do with me. Oh, Francis Xavier, he lived, you know, mm-hmm. he was in Spain. He was Spanish. He came from a rich family. I'm poor. Uh, but people, Mother Teresa people, of Calcutta? Ca- Teresa of Calcutta. Oh, she's from Albania. She's this or that. But the people of Oklahoma, for whom this podcast is mostly uh, made, mm-hmm. Uh, your excuses are pretty limited. <laughs> oh, he, you know, I'm from a small town. Well, Stanley Rother was from a small town. Oh, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not the most academic. Stanley Rother not was not the most, most academic. academic. He would not, did not get big academic awards uh, in seminary. In fact, really struggled with the academic side of seminary. But he had a disciple's heart. And he had missionary zeal, and he took it to the streets. He took of it to Guatemala. Guatemala, yeah. And here we are. He was killed in 1981, and we're yes. not only still talking about him, we're, but we're celebrating his, his feast, feast day. day. Yes. And, and are going to forever. And building a statue to ask for his intercession. Yeah. To pray, to, yeah. to look upon him, and yeah. and, and, and to tell, tell the people of Oklahoma, hey, yeah. We all have this calling. It's not for a select few people. Right. We all have this call to be missionary yeah, disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay, so was he. How are you going to be a missionary in your small town? Yeah. So I would say, what, what would you say to people who uh, who maybe have never have never heard that before? They've been maybe either Catholic all their life, or are just, you know are religious people, uh, but haven't really heard that they're supposed to be a missionary. What would you uh, What would you say? So it was, well, it, it, the, the 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 Gospel of Luke. There's this story of Jesus going out in the desert, and he says he went out filled with the Holy Spirit. Ooh. He's he's sent out. He's misad. He's missionaried. He's being sent out into the desert filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's the victory of God. The victory of the Father, the Son, and Ooh. the Holy Spirit. The victory of God is that we are sent out we are misoed missionaried we are as the word mass is the same word as missionary so you're saying we're being sent out filled with the holy spirit you're saying that the mass and our call to be missionary disciples are linked yeah because explain of this that. Explain because that of the same word you, tell us okay at, at, break, at it down. At, break it down for you fellas boom oh. <laughs> okay enough of that Okay, the the word missionary and the word mass have the same root word, which is the word to send. So misa, mission, missile. Yeah, all of it means to send, missionary. to send, to send, to send out, to send out, to go. That's why we say, "Go forth, the mass is ended." We don't say, "You can leave now." We don't say, "Bye, dep- bye, bye, bye." Depart from me, all you people. It says the first words are "Go." Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Yeah, you can't say. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives, by your life. Yeah, go. Go forth, the mass is ended. Go in peace. And so in the Latin, it was. Ite misa est. The it, mass it, is ended. Yeah, or uh, you it are is. now being, you're being yeah, sent. It is sent. It is Ite sent. Ite misa yeah. est. It yeah. is sent. Like you, you. Both, the, both the sacrifice to God in heaven is sent and all these people, y'all are being sent. Ooh. And that is that that that's lost on a lot of us. I mean, I, I don't think I grew up with that understanding that I was supposed to be a, a missionary. I always remind every couple at every wedding that it says there's a, the line that says witnesses to charity itself, that we who are witnesses to God's love, the encounter with the divine relationship, the encounter with the friendship of God are then... <laughs> What, we're, what, what does a witness do? A witness goes out and like declares what they have discovered, and that's a missionary. And so you could be a missionary uh, of God's love. You can be a missionary of divine love. You can be a missionary disciple of Jesus Christ at the grain elevator. 
Like you're at the water cooler. At the water cooler. In the classroom. In the classroom. Yep. You can be a missionary disciple of Jesus Christ as you're teaching your students, as you're working at your drafting table, as you're laying cement out on a road somewhere mm-hmm. on on the highways of Oklahoma that are in constant need of repair. Praise the Lord for you guys, because you keep my fillings in my teeth as sh- car yeah, shakes. Yeah, so down I the think road. that point that that the gospel not only should be proclaimed yeah. in all places, but needs to be proclaimed. And who's going to do the proclaiming? And I think there's a there's a there's a miss kind of a people miss the idea when they think no that is that is solely the job of uh, of like priests and nuns. Uh, you guys pastors. Need to, yeah. Oh, you have a question about the Catholic faith? Um, let me let me uh, let me send you to my priest. Now you can certainly do that, and we'll we'll take that call. But it'd probably be better if you answered it. I don't I don't know them. I would love to get to know them, but you know them better. You're you you people of Payne County are are in. I mean, in your own families, mm-hmm. you're in your workplaces, you're in your schools way more than Father Carey and I. Right. Way more. Way more. It's a lot easier for you to do that than me. So it's our, our our mission as priests, our mission, we want to make you holy and inspire you so that mm-hmm. when you go out, you we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot more ground if it's not just the the three priests in Stillwater. <laughs> um, but rather thousands and thousands of people activated by their faith, inspired by the likes of Stanley Rother. Who are right. preaching the gospel? And, um, and, and what I what I love about Stanley Rother is he like did this. He, he you know he preached, he taught, he evangelized his people. Who was he a witness to in the end? To these soldiers, like oh, yeah. all the martyrs are witnesses to the soldiers, to the people who killed, like yeah. like um, Stephen the first deacon. He is he's being killed. He's, his head is being crushed in by a rock. And who is he a witness to? A young man named Saul of Tarsus. Still and that, breathing murderous threats. Still breathing th- murderous threats. And, and as you, if you go through history, uh, you find Ignatius of Antioch, who's being carted away to be eaten by lions. What is he doing? He's not only a, a witness, a missionary in this cart caged up to the people that are t- who are like talking to him as he's walking, people, good Christian people. He's also a witness to these, as he says, I'm not sure which lions were more violent, my guards or the ones in the Colosseum. Or I was thinking, the, you know, the feast day we just had of uh, Maria Goretti, you know, her yeah. attacker trying to sexually assault her and eventually killed her. And and because of that, he he had a conversion. It was her witness as a martyr of chastity that that ultimately converted him. Mm-hmm. Wow! John Paul II, oh, Mother yeah. Teresa of Calcutta. Yep. Just go yep. down the yep. list. Yep. It's the these people are are you know great witnesses. John Paul II was was shot. Yep. And he forgave the person who who killed him. He was Amazing. a missionary of. Of the of the good news of Jesus Christ to to that guy, you know Mother Teresa in all of her poverty and suffering, and even like the way she was a missionary to people who didn't like her message, like civil authorities, government mm-hmm. leaders, mm-hmm. people who didn't think that she should be doing the work that she did. They I like what you're saying right now. You smelling what I'm stepping I'm, in? Yeah, I am. I'm picking okay. up what you're. I'm eating what you're cooking. Okay. Wow. Wow. Stanley Rother. So, yeah. So, I, I hope you'll come by if you haven't been by the church. You're putting uh, in the transept next to St. Francis it'll Xavier? Be in the east transept next to St. Francis Xavier, which is also convenient because some people think the statue of St. Francis Xavier is already Stanley Rother. Because <laughs> he's as a priest. He has They're a tall, beard. their beard. They yeah, have a cassock yeah. and surplus. So, on. now we'll be able to say, here's, here's one, here's, you know, here's one, here's the other. Um, so that call to be missionary disciples from our baptism, the church by its nature is missionary. So we got to go out. We okay. Gotta preach it. Brothers and sisters, uh, you have listened to the pastors us. of pain. Thanks bless for joining. Bless Stanley Rother. Peace. Pray for us. God bless.